let people um, grow into roles that they can own those areas and um, so I can keep sort of powering ahead. My name's uh, Duncan Berry. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of uh, Air Supply. Uh, so we're an uh, on-demand uh, marketplace for uh, supply teachers uh, working in the uh, predominantly the UK education sector at the moment. Yeah, and how how did you realise there was a need for this product? Uh, it, it, there was probably a number of things uh, across a sort of three-year period. Uh, I was a commercial director at uh, Tez Global, uh, what was the Times Education Supplement, and we'd just been acquired by TPG Capital in 2013. And at that time, lots of uh, businesses were building uh, uh, Uber for anything, Uber for X, Uber for everything that was out there. And um, they had the idea of an, like an Uber for supply teachers. Um, uh, and as well as running the various businesses that I was running at TES, including Times Higher Education and, and other things, and they asked me with a small project team to, to look at this and look at the market and, and, and what would it look like and how would it disrupt to sort of uh, enter the market. Um, uh, but then they uh, decided they were going to go out and acquire some traditional agencies, so sort of shelved the, the idea. Uh, about that time, I became a governor of a school uh, and could see what we were spending on supply teachers <laughs> and it was just reinforcing that message that um, 1.5 billion is spent on supply teachers and uh, over a third of that goes in fees to you know very analog opaque traditional recruitment agencies uh, it just seemed to uh, schools are unhappy that they were paying uh, a lot and the teachers are unhappy that they aren't getting enough of the share um, and uh, I thought it was such a good idea it's a shame it didn't go forward at TES uh, and then um, I heard that uh, Founders Factory, uh, the uh, tech accelerator, was working with The Guardian, one of their corporate sponsors, in, in developing the idea. And a few companies had then started the idea at that time. Uh, and um, so uh, I got talking with Founders Factory and they said, yeah, well, we've got a basic MVP. We want somebody to come in and run it. And, um, and that's how it all came together. Uh, and I was really driven by, I, I think, knowing a bit about the education space, having seen it from both sides as a governor and sort of more on the commercial side as well. And it just felt like it was the right time that um, uh, teachers should start to be paid fairly uh, and schools should have a bit more transparency. Um, mm. I, I think over the last decade, there's probably been an effort for more transparency around public spend. Um, but I still think there's um, uh, a way to go yet in the uh, recruitment world of, of teachers. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously describing any business as the Uber of uh, is a, a great way to sort of describe it. But in a way, I suppose it oversimplifies what is quite a challenge of starting yeah. a, a two-way marketplace. So talk to me a bit about that. How do, how do you build up critical mass on, on both sides when you're, you're getting going with it? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a challenge. And it's interesting that um, a few of the companies that I said started the similar idea at the same time have gone in a different direction to be more aggregators and sort of farm jobs out to, to, to agencies because building marketplaces uh, isn't easy. You need the right sort of density of teachers close to where you have schools and jobs and you need, need them in, in balance. And, and, you know, we didn't get it perfectly right in, in, in the first year. Um, we're measuring that um, uh, much more carefully now. Um, uh, and yeah, we did very targeted advertising through Google uh, initially. Mm. So very sort of postcode driven advertising around where we signed up schools um, uh, and where we're targeting our marketing at, at schools. So we focused on just four or five local authorities in London to begin with, to make sure we had the right density. Um, and, and we're sort of following that model. Um, now we're expanding um, elsewhere in the UK um, to really just try and get a small number of schools. So there's give or take a hundred schools in each of the 150 plus local authorities. You know, we reckon if we can get um, 10 or so schools in each of the local authorities that we want to operate in, that's when they start talking to each other and saying, we've got this thing, it's saving us time, it's saving us money. Um, the schools are happier, the teachers are being paid more fairly schools have choice over the teacher the teachers have choice over the work there's just much more i say freedom 
uh, and um, get, getting that density is, is around, I, I think, targeted marketing. We've been fortunate to work with the right partners as well, both um, through The Guardian, but more latterly in the Twinkle Hive Accelerator, who have you know, extensive reach through uh, education. Uh, and that certainly helps us um, get um, enough traction in the areas that we want with both schools and teachers. Mm. So t- tell me a bit more about, you mentioned this, the partnership you have with The Guardian. So what, what does that look like and how did that come about? Um, so The Guardian are one of uh, a number of six to seven at the, the, the beginning, uh, the, there's more now, uh, corporate sponsors of Founders Factory. So, so the Founders Factory idea was set up by uh, the guys that set up lastminute.com, so Brent Hoberman, Henry Lane Fox involved in a lot of the old lastminute.com team and could see that the sort of future of um, uh, investment uh, and tech startups might be that a lot of it comes from corporates who mm. you know, want to sort of try and get sight of um, disruptor and digital ideas um, without trying to do it in-house. Um, so there were sort of six different sectors, uh, travel, which was EasyJet, uh, beauty tech, which was L'Oreal, um, media, which was The Guardian, and we sort of fall into that, although The Guardian obviously has a big um, uh, teacher network, uh, uh, and a number of others. And um, uh, Finance Factory are going to uh, incubate uh, ideas through their studio, of which we were one of those, um, uh, and they're also going to... Um, find startups in the market and and help them scale Um, so providing services um, access to uh, people will help them fundraise um, all all sorts of services that you get in in an accelerator Um, but then you've got these sort of big corporate partnerships Um, uh, so the guardian were very helpful in promoting us in the early stages uh, and they're always raising that um, uh, the, the, the PR and uh, it's just something that they felt they were talking about before the idea came out. They were talking about um, the unhappiness of supply teachers and how it just seemed a, a really broken model um, that was um, ready for, for change. Um, we've done some advertising through the Guardian uh, as well, and we're always sort of talking with their um, commercial teams about how we can work together but respect each other's you know business interests. Um, not overlap, but um, uh, do what's right for, for, for schools. Um, and both through Twinkle and The Guardian, it's, um, it's important to us to be driven by businesses that have you know, a great sense of, sort of social justice and, and, and wanting to make a good social uh, impact. Uh, I, I think there's more startups emerging um, uh, in, in that uh, field. And yeah, that's important for us getting up every morning um, to feel that we're, we're, we're doing good and both teachers and schools are benefiting uh, from the work that we're doing. Absolutely. And for those less familiar with the educational sector, how quick are they, schools in particular, to, to adopt new tech? And, and how do you go about actually getting into these schools? Yeah, uh, schools, um, I think I've been sort of fortunate to be in the journey for, you know, 10 years or so and, and, and seen a sort of um, a, a real change, particularly over the last uh, 12 months. Uh, I, I guess if, if there's one, there's not a lot positive uh, and it's been a really difficult year um, with, with schools being open closed, although they're not really closed because they're open for key worker children, um, but it's been a real stop start year. Um, but they've been forced to embrace technology and, and whilst everyone was sympathetic during the first lockdown in the everything had to close and, and the sort of connectivity and infrastructure was not in place for schools to deliver learning. Um, they were never gonna be, parents were never gonna be as sympathetic the second time round. Uh, and uh, I think it's, um, I've read various reports that saying it's accelerated the development of ed tech or the embrace of ed tech by schools by four to five years. So typically they, they have been slow. I mean, I, I would also, sort of stand up for schools and say, you know, prior to that, there was a lot of ed tech that was thrown at them that um, wasn't really answering a problem, um, promising to turn children mm-hmm. overnight into maths geniuses or, or whatever the next um, uh, app was going to do. Um, uh, a lot of it was based on not great depth of evidence and, um, you know, schools get one shot at sort of developing a child uh, learning and, and to introduce lots and lots of new technologies 
um, uh, can be disruptive uh, in, in a negative sense. Um, so I, I think they've been cautious. Um, I, I think um, there are some sort of platforms emerging that are trying to distill, you know, where is the evidence based and which uh, ed tech companies um, have shown that they're making um, uh, a positive uh, impact and, and outcomes on attainment or whatever they're aiming at. Um, so I, I can see it for both sides, from the school side and, and the frustrated uh, ed tech company that thinks mm. schools don't adopt quickly enough. Um, but I, I, I think the COVID uh, experience um, has meant that um, there's um, much more confidence and comfort with the use of technology. And, and I think for us, I think it's, it's hugely exciting. It, it's sort of starting to unlock the world that is breaking down that sort of established model of you have to have a teacher in the classroom physically with the children all of the time. Um, and um, we've got schools that we work with that have been delivering lessons with the children in the classroom, but the teacher at home because they've been shielding. Um, and it uh, has huge impact on parts of the UK, uh, predominantly coastal cities that, um, and towns that have always struggled to recruit teachers. Um, and maybe they can start thinking, well, you know, for a term or two terms, if we're still looking for a permanent teacher, we don't need to find a teacher that lives locally. We can just find the best teacher wherever they may be. Um, a lot more, a lot more um, online schools are setting up. So yeah, I, I think um, the recent years has, has really sort of changed um, the landscape uh, and um, we're really excited about what's gonna happen over the next few years. Mm, it sounds like the, the business has really grown and evolved over, over the years um, from going through the accelerator to really now expanding the number of schools and regions you're in. Um, How's that affected your role as the founder? How's, how's that changed over time? Yeah, it's, um, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say no, no two days uh, are the same. Uh, I think a lot of people say that. I, I, I would say with schools, schools are open nine months of the year, right? So you, you get these sort of um, intense periods of um, school and teacher activity. Um, and then periods of the holidays uh, when schools are closed, um, so they've been less less closed uh, over this past year. Um, when you can really then sort of knuckle down with your sort of product team and look at the roadmap, and um, uh, so so that there are sort of almost sort of seasonal uh, changes um, in, in terms of your role. Um, I, I think now, yeah, we're, we're always looking. Uh, it's, I always think it's the founder's job to be looking to. Um, get the best team in place possible um, uh, you're always looking at funding and cash flow and you know where, where the next round of funding will, will come from um, uh, and um, uh, looking at the long-term strategy but also uh, opportunities so a good, good example um, was um, obviously during lockdown lots of supply teachers um, we furloughed our teachers um, but some that had signed up fell out of the furlough scheme. Lots of supply teachers have spent the last 12 months with, with very little work. Um, and we wanted to, to, to do something to, to, to help them. Um, so we white labeled some tutoring technology and just said to parents in lockdown, look, we're, you know, we're gonna make tutoring uh, sessions, group ones, they're gonna be qualified teachers teaching the national curriculum. And we're gonna make it very affordable um, because it's gonna be in a small group. Uh, and that really got busy very quickly um, and uh, it's sort of frightened me a little bit because I've always worked B2B and I'm very comfortable in the sort of B2B environment and suddenly it's B2C with parents, um, uh, you know, paying cash immediately for lessons that are happening throughout the course of the day um, and it's a different kind of marketing uh, and um, so, but it's a really interesting opportunity for us to deploy our teachers and I've always been a big believer that the UK teaching QTS teaching qualification is such a highly regarded professional qualification um, and people that have it we can use them in lots of different ways there are huge opportunities for them not just in the UK teaching in classrooms um, but tutoring and many of them have, 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 have done a lot of that over the past year international work as, as well 
Um, so it, it, it takes you in different directions, um, your, your role, um, but I, I try and um, uh, bring um, parts of the team uh, along. Um, you know, we've, I think we've got a really good balanced team across some um, uh, commercial compliance and engineering, which really is schools, teachers, and the product. Um, uh, and those are the three important things. Um, let people um, grow into roles that they can own those areas. Um, so I can keep sort of powering ahead with partnerships that we have with Twinkle, um, new opportunities that have emerged for us. Uh, and obviously I was thinking about the team and, and funding. Mm. So obviously uh, a lot of moving parts there. So what, what are the, the big goals for the business over the next year or so? Yeah, so, so it's to, to go from being a sort of predominantly London business, uh, London Southeast, um, to being a, a more national business. So certainly operating in, in several regions uh, in the UK uh, and then also to evolve the uh, tutoring business that we've just developed uh, into an, an, an international business so providing group tutoring to both schools and groups of children direct to their parents all, all over the world um, so we've already made we started to make good progress again in the autumn term so at the end of 2020 um, schools across sort of Liverpool Manchester uh, Bradford Leeds Sheffield um, we've got office space space up there with the, the twinkle hive accelerator now um, but that was the occasion when lots of uh, regions of the north and northwest were into tier three, tier four, which at that time felt like the worst place in the world to be. And before we knew that another national lockdown was coming. Um, but um, uh, I, I think with the sort of catch up that's required, there's um, a huge demand. So, yeah, we're, we're expecting a lot of growth, both in our, our sort of traditional markets or regions in, in the southeast. Um, but in these new areas as well, where we're making real progress and um, um, starting to save schools lots of money as well, uh, which, uh, you know, I think budget's going to be tight for schools for a number of years. So um, we're going to continually push the message that we save time and money uh, and take it into new regions, uh, because the idea is still relatively new. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in some areas, um, uh, some parts of the UK are less well served by a ticket. Everyone wants to try their idea out uh, in uh, in London, um, but um, Sheffield is a, a really sort of vibrant place for, for, for EdTech, and we want to take the idea there with our partnership with Twinkle uh, and um, get out to schools um, uh, in other parts of the country. Well, it certainly sounds like an exciting time. So, for those listening, where can they find out more about Air Supply? Uh, so airsupply.org.uk, um, uh, that's, that's our platform. If you're a UK qualified teacher, flexible working, um, providing tutoring, um, uh, we're sort of listed on the Twinkle Hive Accelerator. Um, so yeah, uh, contact me directly. Uh, it's always happy to hear from anyone, always happy to help uh, other startups. We've got experience of a couple of different accelerators that we're still part of, and um, they've offered very different services for us, but, uh, but both have been um, uh, hugely important partners uh, uh, to us and continue to be. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's uh, and uh, always happy to talk anything education. <laughs>